Well, hello and welcome to this video where I'm talking all about how to get started with Facebook Live video. This is something I am so excited to be sharing and I can't believe it's taken me such a long time to do this video. I'll be talking about why doing video and specifically going live, despite that fear, it's really gonna help you grow your art business much faster. So stay right to the end because I'm gonna share some useful top tips to help you get started straight away, maybe even straight after watching this video. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Sophie Mejia and I help female artists to make a living from their art or creativity by building a stable, profitable business doing what they love. Now, if that sounds like you and you'd like some more tips on growing your art business, then you're in the right place. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to get notified every time I post a new video, which by the way, is every week on a Wednesday. All right, let's start talking about Facebook Live videos. Now, specifically what I'm talking about is face-to-camera videos. You know, not the type where you take your phone and you just pan it around your studio live. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about you actually on the camera in specifically your studio or out and about or wherever. Okay, so here are some common questions I get asked all the time. Number one, where should I go live? And the answer to that question is your business page. Now listen, you can go live of course on your profile. This will be go out and be seen by your friends. But if you're talking about your business and perhaps about artwork or workshops or courses or products or services, you're technically talking about your business and Facebook's not gonna love you for that. They would really like you to do that on your page. So that's what I want you to think about. Unless you're doing a chitty chatty, more personal type of video, in which case that of course can go on your profile. But we're talking about building a business here. So answer to that question is you're gonna go live on your page or in your group if you run your own group. Now, if you're not sure if having a Facebook group is for you, check out this video where I talk all about how to get started with a Facebook group, whether it's right for you, and if it is, some top tips to get going straight away. So ideally, you want to let people know that you're going to go live, because if you just pop up and go live, nobody will know, they'll get a notification, they might see it, it might be convenient, it might be not. So if you let people know and say, hey, I'm gonna be going live every Friday morning at this time from my studio or creative space, then you could build up something regular and that works quite well. Now, of course, don't expect thousands of people to watch straight away. You've got to build it. It's, you know, it's how it works. It works with all over these platforms and Facebook's no different. So if you'd like some more top tips on building your Facebook page, check out this video. And if you want to know any other Facebook related videos, I will of course link to them in the description below this one. So question number two that I get asked all the time, and that is what equipment do I need? How do I go live? What is the best way? Well, as we know, there's really a couple of ways you're likely gonna do that. One is you're going to be using your smartphone and you're gonna go live via your phone, perhaps on a tripod, which is how I've got it actually set up just recording this video. Or you're gonna go live on your computer or laptop using the Facebook app or using a third party piece of streaming software. Now, I'm not about to dive into all of that, but if you've got questions about that, shoot your question below this video. And we're really happy to ask, answer them. So what about other equipment to go with either your laptop or your phone? Well, listen, good lighting is essential. Nobody wants to watch a dark live where they're peering in to try and see you. So make sure you are next to a window and you've got some natural lighting or you've got a, a ring light or a simple light you can rig up that's super easy. But to be honest with you, for a live video, mostly the natural light is good. And what if you're using a phone? You might need a tripod. These are really easy things to pick up, either secondhand or buy off a platform like Amazon. Something, again, is gonna hold your phone. Now, if you're using your laptop and you want to get it in a good position, you might do what I do, highly technical. Are you ready for this? Come closer. I pile the laptop on two cardboard boxes. Oh yes, high tech, but that way it gets the right level that in order that, you know, it's I'm not looking up, I'm not looking, I've got a chin thing going on, I've got it all lined up correctly. It's a stack of boxes, nothing more complicated than that. 
Now, you'll probably see that I've got a little um, lapel mic here. So sometimes if you know you're gonna be in a, a room that's maybe got some noise or you're in a noisier place, you're going to need a microphone. But at the beginning, when you're first starting out, it's possible to do this without any extras. I don't want you to think, oh, I can't go live because I don't have a microphone. Just go live anyway, and then you can improve things as you go down the track. I started out just with a phone, as I'm pretty sure everyone else did. And now, sure, I've got a microphone for, for doing recording like this. I've got a more solid microphone if I'm using my computer, but I've built that up over time, all right? So question number three, I get asked all the time, how long should my live be? All right, so there's a variety of different lengths according to what you're actually gonna be doing. Facebook says that optimal live length is around three minutes at time of watching. So it needs to be long enough that people can get the notification and actually get onto your live and it can take about a minute for the thing to get pushed out in the algorithm anyway. So if you're doing a super short video, people might arrive on it and you're just finishing. So I tend to find that I'm like, my, my audience, like you guys, tend to like something a little bit longer. And I've done a five to 10 minute video and, and found that's not as successful as if I were to do a 20 to 25 minute video because I'm teaching and sharing something. So if you run workshops and courses and you're going to teach some top tips, you want to maybe have something around the 10, 15, 20 minute mark so that someone can really get stuck in and learn something. But if you're going doing something that's in situ or you're sharing some inspiration or lesson learned or something funny that happened in the studio or you're doing a live because you're out and about at a venue and you want to report back in as to what's going on, make it around the three minute mark because then people can get in, get involved, get the information, get entertained and leave again. So if you are in the, t in the teaching or demonstrating world, then you could even, dependent on your audience, you could even set up something even longer. You let them know in advance, so I'm gonna be teaching the following things on this particular date. You know, make sure you, you put the date in the diary, like you really drum up some excitement, and you could teach something for maybe an hour or more, and then of course, offer people the next step on that live training. It's very often what a lot of us will do on what we call a webinar, that you can do it on a Facebook Live as well. And don't forget, there's lots of things that you can do with your Facebook Live afterwards, so hang on to the end. Question number four, what am I gonna talk about? This is probably the question I get asked the most, all right? Once we've got past the, the length, where to go, the equipment, all of this, it's like, well, okay, Sophie, what am I gonna talk about? You've talked about in the studio, or if you're teaching, what if I'm not teaching anything? What if I'm just making something? What on earth am I gonna share on a live? So here's just a few suggestions. You could talk about the materials that you use. Now, don't forget, this might not be super exciting for you, but it might be really interesting for your ideal audience. You could also talk about what inspires you. And if what inspires you is out and about, then maybe go to a place that inspires you and do a short video there, letting people know why this place is of special interest and what it specifically inspires you in terms of your artwork and your creativity. You know what? People like a laugh. Why not share a mistake, something that's gone horribly wrong, a big mess, you know, a, a studio disaster, basically. People love a laugh. And even if it's, oh my God, I've just spilt something everywhere, or this is what went wrong today, this is all a bit of a disaster. You know, it's funny, it's entertaining, it's good content, and unfortunately, you'll probably find you get more views and shares on that, than you will on your serious video. So make sure to mix it all in with what you're doing anyway. Your story. Now, I know that we don't wanna share our entire personal journey here, but your story as a creative in little bits, interspersed again with other things, can be really interesting for your audience. So maybe each week you share a little thing that somebody didn't know about you on your journey towards building your art business. Studio progress. Now. This becomes what, what by default a lot of artists are doing. It's like, oh, I need to do a live. I'll just get my camera and I might say, you know, this is what I'm doing and you just pan around. I, I would prefer if you just planned it a little bit. You know, think about why is your audience, why should they watch? What's interesting? If it's studio progress, what was before? What's the end result? And what have you done in order to get there? What have you learned on the way? What have you changed? 
not just this is where we started or this is what I've done today is put some you know blue on here it's not very interesting for people you need to think about why they're going to watch and what they can learn or glean from it it could be how you've solved something. So you go on a live and you say, and you could even do one at the beginning of the day, this is my studio working day, here's three pieces I'm working on, here's where I'm stuck with all of them and I'll report back at the end of the day as to how I got on. Video two, this is how I solved that problem on painting number two. Remember I told you I was stuck with this, that and the other? Well, I've done this and this is the result. So that can be quite nice as well because if people watch the part one, then they're pulled into part two. Obviously, top tips, you know, it's a given. If, if you teach or you run any time of art service, then you've always got something to share. So a simple tip, three ways to do something, five tips to doing something, all the sort of things that I'm sharing on this channel, you can apply to what you're doing as well. So don't forget to share in the comments below this video what you would talk about, or what you do talk about if you already go live on your Facebook page, because we would love, love, love you here and if you're brave enough share a link to your video so we can have a look as well question number five how do I get past that fear of going live on camera oh my goodness me that's a whopper isn't it now thank goodness I've got another video coming up on how to build confidence on camera but for the moment let's just take a look at a few things that you could do to get past this fear so the number one thing you can do is plan out what you're going to be talking about. Now I don't know about you but just switching on live and not really having a plan is of course going to send you into fear. Oh my god what am I talking about? Where am I? What am I doing? You need to plan what you're doing so that you've got an element of confidence when you go onto the camera. Number two, <laughs> set a date and commit. All right. Sometimes we have this, oh, I'll, I'll do live tomorrow, but unless you're telling anybody, you can always bump that on to next week, next week, next week. So you need to just set a date and commit to it, and that's just gonna help you. Right? You've just got to show up, and sometimes feeling the fear and doing it anyway is the best way to get past that and move forwards. Number three is you just need to show up and go live. You know, you just gotta think to yourself, what's the worst that can happen? You know, sometimes the internet goes down or maybe your electric goes down and the light goes off. I've, I've, I've been there, done that multiple times. You have a brain fog, you can't remember who you are or what you're doing. This stuff happens and you just need to show up and do it. And by showing up and doing it, it's like you're gonna do it and you're gonna practice over and over and you're gonna feel better with the next one. You also just wanna get the mistakes out of the way, all right, and feel okay with it. It's just a live video. All right, it's not the end of the world. If it's a bit of a disaster, you get that one out of the way and you just go again. The more times you do it, the better you're gonna feel. So like I say, get them, get them out of the way. I actually did, when I first started out back in the day, I think I started with a 30 day challenge for myself, really. I thought I planned out what I'd talk about and every day I went live for 30 days. I've done it with a blogging challenge. I've done it with a variety of other challenges. But sometimes it's the best way. Just get on video, just get in there, do it. By the end of 30 days, you'll feel like a pro. You'll be like, ah, oh, I found a great place to put my camera. I found out, you know, the best time of day to do it, the best lighting. Maybe I've picked up a microphone, I sound better. Now I've, I've you know, made a few mistakes. I've seen what's popular, what's not popular. And that's how it goes. All right. I promised you if you stay to the end, there's some useful tips to get going straight away. So I've got five more tips for you. Are you ready? All right, tip number one, practice on your phone video first before you go live, all right? So if you're gonna, no matter whether you're using the laptop to go live or your phone, just grab your phone, put it in video mode and practice pretending you're live. Tip number two, find great light and sound. This is really gonna help you. So just grab your phone, your laptop, and move it around the space that you're in until you've got the best position to give you the best light. And then ideally, the best room, if you're using a room inside, carpet, padding, will absorb any sound. Shut the door, put a note on it saying, I'm doing a live video, please keep quiet, whatever you need to do. Tip number three, just start confidently. No errs and ums, don't wait for people to come on, get stuck straight in. A lot of people watch the replay and they're not gonna watch it if you start with, uh, um, oh, it maybe it's live, oh, I'll wait another couple of minutes, forget it, get straight in. Hello, my name is, welcome, today I'm talking about. Tip number four, ask for engagement. 
Facebook wants engagement. You want people to comment below the video, so ask for it. Tip number five, you want to promote your video on other platforms, right? Don't forget you can download it and upload it onto YouTube. You can take a little snippet out of it and put it on a story on Instagram or on your Facebook. You can let people know if you're building an email list, which we hope you are because you're following my channel, right? And if you want to know about how to build an email list, check out this video and check out other videos in the description below this one. Assuming you're building your mailing list, you can send an email out with, hey, I just went live or I'm going to go live and you drive more people to watch that. More people watching it, Facebook happier, and next time you go live, they'll push you out to more people. And remember, it's okay if the first time you go live, you've only got one viewer, or the viewer is your mother. It's okay because you start small, right? Then you go live again, you tell some more people about it. The next time you get 10 people, then 20 people, then 50 people. Then you start to get some conversations going and Facebook says, oh, okay, people like this content, I'm gonna push it out. We know that vis video is vital on social media and going live, you're gonna get the most points. And also, by the way, it's a lot easier because there's no hefty editing and uploading at the end either. Much, much easier. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you're gonna go and get stuck in on going live. Look out for the next video all on confidence. And I'll see you again on another one very soon.